over to China, which is targeting U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo over his comments on Chinese tech giants and the Communist Party of China. A China State Councillor Wang Yi rejected what he described as American interventionism in China. He asked Pompeo to respect China's social system and the choices made by the people of China. According to him, Beijing is not interested in an ideological confrontation with the United States. 同时我们尊重世界各国人民自主选择的发展道路，无意同任何国家进行制度竞争，也无意同任何国家搞意识形态对抗。我们希望美方也能尊重中国的社会制度，尊重中国人民的选择，放弃注定失败的干涉主。China also unveiled a four-point strategy to improve ties with Washington. It requires both sides to steer clear of direct confrontation and give priority to peace talks. The new framework rejects American efforts to scale back ties with China and urges Washington to uphold its responsibilities as a global power. For the China's 我们的反制措施合情合理合法，也完全符合外交惯例。中方没有意愿，也没有兴趣与美方打什么外交战，因为这只会对两国人民的利益造成更多的损害。Pompeo has been leading America's global campaign against China. He has attacked the Chinese regime on multiple issues, including the new security law in Hong Kong and the internment of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Chinese mobile applications have also emerged as a point of contention between the two sides. Pompeo wants to pull so-called untrusted Chinese apps from the American market. On his radar are apps run by Chinese companies like Alibaba, Baidu and Tencent. We want to see untrusted Chinese apps removed from U.S. app stores. President Trump has mentioned impending action on TikTok, and for good reason. With parent companies based in China, apps like TikTok, WeChat, and others are significant threats to personal data of American citizens, not to mention tools for CCP content censorship. And to give us a sense of perspective on this news story, I'm joined in by our correspondent Patrick Falk, who's joining me live this hour from Beijing. Patrick, a very good afternoon to you. Now, what might these comments by China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi be aimed at? Well, there's been a lot of debate about this wolf warrior approach from China, and some reports are suggesting that the Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who's not known to shy away from confrontational remarks himself, may have been trying to ease tensions between uh, the two sides. And one has to wonder uh, what this change in tact is all about. We talked about it a little bit yesterday as well, uh, uh, in fact, when we said that the latest comments that come out of the foreign ministry regarding Taiwan didn't uh, weren't accompanied by any threats or warnings of retaliation, which did seem to be a bit of a shift from what we've seen of late uh, from China. So we're wondering exactly uh, what this is all about and whether or not the developments over the last few days may have had some sort of impact within Beijing and had uh, perhaps some of the leadership questioning whether or not this was the right sort of approach uh, to take, particularly when we consider what's happened with the consulate in Houston and, and Chengdu and also uh, with the row over technology and, of course, uh, this visit, this cabinet-level visit uh, to Taiwan as well, which no doubt will have angered uh, a lot of people in Beijing uh, as well. Right. Uh, so. We have to sort of wonder, you know, which of it is these matters will have concerned the most or whether or not, whether or not it's an amalgamation of all these things and whether or not uh, China is able to pull back from the precipice at this point, given the state of affairs, given the state of ties between Washington and Beijing right now. Right. Uh, Patrick, which is why I'd also like to ask you, what is China implying by talking about decoupling with the United States, as has been suggested, might happen? Well, there has also been a lot of discussion about decoupling as well. In fact, at the annual uh, parliamentary sessions this year, uh, President Xi Jinping talked about China needing to uh, protect its interests and uh, being able to uh, be self-sufficient, uh, particularly because of the backlash 
uh, globally because of COVID-19 and this sort of expectation uh, that uh, it is going to uh, be confronted with a lot of difficulties uh, with a lot of countries around the world, not just the U.S., and that it may need to uh, focus more on its domestic economy. So, you know, in fact, one of the articles that was in the Global Times today talked about needing to protect itself against potential financial decoupling. Uh, as we've seen, that's happened along the lines of trade and technology already. There is a suggestion uh, uh, among some Chinese that they think the U.S. may cut China off from SWIFT uh, payments, right. which could have some serious ramifications. It's so, as I say, China China is very much concerned about this and, and wants to be prepared for that possibility. It's very interesting that you mentioned trade because I actually would like to ask you, will the ongoing rift between the United States and China impact the review of the trade deal that's all set to happen later this month? Well, that's hard to say. As you say, it's not far away. Uh, from now that that is happening. That is perhaps part of what, what is on China's mind, uh, wanting to ease tensions going into these discussions so that there is a sort of platform for the two sides to actually be able to talk and uh, review uh, what's happening right now. There have been reports suggesting that China's actually only been able to fulfill a very small amount of, of the phase one trade deal. As we know, it has uh, two years to fulfill this deal, and only a small percentage of that has been fulfilled so far. But, you know, I think it's fair to say as well that the uh, coronavirus pandemic was an unexpected situation. So perhaps there will be some sort of discussion on uh, whether or not uh, some sort of agreement can be made to um, lengthen the agreement or, or, or ease this sort of burden that has come with COVID-19 as well. Right. We would have to wait and watch how phase one of this review actually pans out. Thank you so much, Patrick Falk, for bringing us all the latest.